I've been talking to a death row inmate for more than a year. His name is Scott Dozier. On Saturday, after more than a decade on death row and two state executions, Scott died of an apparent suicide. Prison guards found him hanging from a bed sheet in his prison cell. In 2016, Scott made headlines when he volunteered for execution, setting in motion a series of legal battles over the lethal injection drugs that would be used. In November 2017, his first scheduled execution was stayed. Then in July 2018, I sat down with him for his final interview. But as he was saying goodbye to his family, hours before a scheduled execution, it was stayed again. I talked to him in mid-December, and he made clear to me that he did not want to kill himself. Well, well, here's the deal. I'm not a suicidal person. I don't sit around and wish I was dead. I don't want to be dead. I just would rather be dead than in prison. This whole process is having secondary and tertiary effects, even with the, throughout my family and loved ones, you know what I mean? It's ongoing, and it's just fucked up. And so in the process of discussing things, you know what I mean? Like, here's the options. We can either power through and keep going. I can stop the process and try to get my appeals back, or I could commit suicide. Scott wasn't the easiest person to sympathize with. He was convicted of killing two people. But he spent the last years of his life essentially daring the state to resolve the paradox of death sentences. He had accepted his death sentence, but he was passionate in his belief that he deserved to die swiftly and not be tortured by the sentence. Most recently, he was placed under mental health observation with all of his personal belongings stripped away. Would it be accurate to say that you were in a good mental state when you were put into mental health observation, but they drove you toward a poor mental state? Without question, that's fair. Not to pull only poor, but as bad as a mental state as I'd ever been in in my life. All of my coping mechanisms were gone. They took every ability I had to deal with the situation. Yeah, it's as bad as I've ever been since I've been in prison. Man. The Nevada Department of Corrections says it's still investigating Scott's apparent suicide and has no further comment at this time. Prison officials have previously denied that Scott was mistreated. In November, Scott filed a lawsuit against the state alleging that the conditions of mental health observation caused psychological deterioration that could push him towards suicide. Two days before his death, Scott told me he was concerned that the incoming governor would push to abolish the death penalty, leaving him in prison for life. As Scott saw it, suicide in his situation wasn't a crazy act. It was a rational one. <laughs>